Okay, it's kind of a fun problem today. We have here the sum from n equals one to 2025 of n factorial mod seven. Now I was thinking about this and I'm not sure for the people watching if it's gonna be easy or difficult just because it's a calculus channel. I think for people that are familiar with this kind of thing, it's gonna be very easy, but some people might not be familiar. So I'm just gonna kind of start from scratch with it. The first thing I wanna do very briefly is just introduce this idea of modular arithmetic here. It's gonna be pretty simple. We're not gonna to get too far into it, but really we're just talking about division with remainders. So maybe I could show it with some kind of example. Like if we have, if we have nine mod seven, you divide seven into nine, it just divides once, but you get a remainder of two. So we say it's congruent. This is gonna be congruent to two. And if you had something like 35 mod seven, this is just gonna be zero because seven divides into 35. So we get no remainder here. And so for the solution, we don't really care how many times it divides into this for this kind of problem. We just wanna know really what the remainder is. And then maybe just one more, like if we have something like six mod seven, well, it doesn't even divide, like if we were divided in, we would just multiply by zero, but the remainder is gonna be six. So this is congruent to six. But in mod seven, we could write this another way. We could also write this as negative one. So now getting back to our problem here, First of all, actually, someone might be wondering if it matters if mod seven is like within the sum or outside of the sum. It actually doesn't matter with this. So, I mean, we really probably want to reduce it for every term because if you were to first take, if you were to first take this sum right here, 2025 is going to be such a huge number. You're not going to want to try to calculate that out first. And that does bring up something interesting with factorials. We can start to just look at some of the bigger terms at first. So like, Let's just say, pretend n is seven, just for one of, I mean, that's gonna be one of these terms. So if we look at seven factorial mod seven, and we break that up, seven factorial is just this thing. But then what happens when we divide mod seven into seven factorial? Well, it divides exactly. So this value is gonna be congruent to zero. We could boost it up one, if we looked at eight factorial, well, we still keep most of the same number. We're just gonna have eight times this whole number, but seven still divides into it evenly, remainder of zero. We can keep going nine, 10, all the way to 2025. So really the joke of it is the 2025 really doesn't matter very much or it doesn't matter at all. It actually could be, it doesn't even matter. It could be 2025 factorial there, which would be even a, I mean, I can't even, and that would be like an unfathomable number, but, we don't need any of that because seven factorial and everything above it's gonna divide evenly. So we can actually just go one to six. But now for this, again, I mean, we could start at the small numbers because that's gonna be easy. I mean, actually at this point, you could just calculate it out, right? I mean, I think I know, so six factorial is 720. So just calculating it out is not that bad. I just wanna look into it a little closer and see if there's some nice shortcuts we can use. Actually, I didn't need to erase all that because I wanted to think about six factorial. So six factorial is gonna look like this. And again, six factorial is 720. So we could actually just calculate that out. I mean, I think you can see what that is, but I don't really wanna do it that way. What I wanna do instead, let's look at this idea of an inverse for a second. So if we look at, I'm using this notation for the inverse and we're just, we'll start with one. So for the inverse of one mod seven, what we want is it's just going to be what value is going to make this thing one. That's all we need for an inverse. One mod seven, that is. Well, for one, we just multiply by one. We get one. Nothing too hard there. Then we'll look at our inverse for two mod seven. Now, like in the regular numbers, we'd multiply by one half to get to one. We're not going to, we're only using integers here. But what we could, so what we could do here is if we multiply two by four, that's gonna give eight mod seven. And eight mod seven, when you reduce it, take the remainder, that's gonna be one. So this is actually gonna be four in order to get to our inverse for two. So of course, if you had crazy large numbers, that's when it gets complicated. You probably need the Euclidean algorithms. It's hard to like, in your head, go through all the possibilities for multiplying this out and getting an inverse, but there's ways for bigger numbers. So here we can do just kind of the same thing. This one, the inverse for three, five gets us to 15 which is one greater than 14, which is a multiple of seven. For four, we can actually just use what we did over here um, because two times four is eight, four times two is eight. So this one is gonna be two. Same thing here, we can use this one for five. 
5 times 3 is 15 again. And for our 6 inverse, this one's kind of interesting because like we did before, we can look at 6 as minus 1 mod 7. But then, of course, we know minus 1 times minus 1 gives us a 1. So this inverse over here, I could write this as minus 1, but to keep it all reduced like this and be consistent, let's write this as a 6. But then if we just go down this right column here and we just multiply everything together, what this is, it's in a different order, but this is just 6 factorial. To make it clear, I can group this in a certain way. We'll use this one here. Um, then let's go four here, but I'm gonna group it with the two because those are inverses. So we'll do four times two here because in mod seven, that's just one. And then next we can take the five and the three, group those together. And those, because those are inverses, that's gonna be one as well. And then the only number that we didn't use yet is the six. And then when I multiply out six factorial, just going in a different order, we've got one times one times one times six, get rid of this. So our value for six factorial mod seven is just six. But this trick has a name. This is actually Wilson's theorem. It works every time when that number is a prime. So it says, well, it doesn't actually quite say this, but as part of it, it tells us when we have p minus one factorial mod p, this is gonna be congruent to just p minus one, or it's congruent to minus one, right? Because this is minus one mod p when this thing is a prime. But the theorem's usually stated the other way, stating that when you have this, then p is a prime. But it also works the other way to say, when we have this situation and p is a prime, we can do what we just did here. So instead of doing this all out, just knowing the theorem, you would just go immediately and say, this thing is going to be 6 or minus 1. But along with this, we can get another value just as easily. Instead of looking at 6 factorial, we could look at 5 factorial and just do basically the same thing we just did. Write out 5 factorial like this out of order. 1 times 2 times 4 and then 5 times 3, just leaving off the 6. And then what happens again, because they're inverses, this is 1, this is 1. We end up with 1 times 1 times 1. And so the whole thing's just one. So along with this statement of Wilson's theorem, we also have for p minus two factorial mod p, this thing is always gonna be congruent to one. And so with Wilson's theorem, we really have everything we need to finish this off. So let's just sum this out. We only have six terms and we know we just calculated the two hardest ones or the two biggest numbers. So let's just sum up all these terms, one to six. So for one factorial, mod seven, I mean, that's just one. So put down a one. Same thing with two factorial, that's gonna be easy, that's a two. Uh, three factorial, now three factorial is six. And we said before, six is the same thing as minus one. I like using the negative values. It's maybe just my preference, but it keeps the numbers smaller and it's gonna cancel stuff off. So, I mean, you could use six just as well. Four factorial, there is actually kind of a formula with Wilson's theorem, I'm gonna leave that off though, it's a little more complicated. So you could do it that way, but what we could do is just multiply that out. Four factorial is 24 mod seven equals three, just because three goes in three times, remainder three. Five factorial, we already found that one. That one is just gonna be one, which we have right there. And six factorial, this thing right here, that formula, that's gonna be six, or I can write that as minus one. So then when I sum these up, we can cancel that and get a zero, cancel that and get a zero, add together two and three, and for my final solution on this, we just get five, and that's it. Okay, there you go, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching, have a good day.